in the classification of PAX controller, one of the shunt connected controller is SVC and there are three types of static volt ampere reactive compensator. The first type of SVC we understood in the part number three which is thyristor controlled reactor. Then thyristor switch reactor is also an SVC and thyristor switch capacitor. So this part explains the VI characteristic of static volt ampere reactive compensator and fax device fixed capacitor thyristor controlled reactor. So in this part we are supposed to understand the different region of VI characteristic of SVC compensator as well as what are the limitations of thyristor control reactor. So we have to use FCTC R. So let us begin with the VI characteristic of SVC. So this is the VI characteristic of volt ampere reactive compensator. So on the X axis the parameter is the current through SVC and on the Y axis the parameter is the voltage. So the steady state and the dynamic characteristic of SVC is describe the variation of SVC bus voltage with SVC current or reactive power. This VI characteristic gives us the information about the variation of the voltage across the shunt connected fax controller over the variation of current through it or the reactive power whether current through the SVC increases or decreases what is the effect on voltage across the SVC that we can understand. Reference voltage that is the first point in the VI characteristic it is denoted by V reference. This is the voltage at terminals of SVC during the floating condition which means that the static volt ampere reactive compensator is neither absorbing nor generating any kind of reactive power. When the SVC is connected to the line, then the V reference is the rated voltage of the line at the point of connection and it is also considered as voltage across SVC when SVC does not absorb any reactive power nor it injects any reactive power into the system. So V reference is the rated voltage across the SVC. The reference voltage can be varied between the maximum limit that is V1 and the minimum limits that is V2. They are also denoted by V reference maximum and V reference minimum either by the SVC control system. Right? We can increase or decrease the voltage magnitude from this V reference to V1 or V reference to V2 using the control system of SVC. If SVC is made up of thyristor controlled compensator, so by controlling the firing angle we can control the voltage or by the taps of coupling transformer in the case of saturated reactor compensator and if SVC does not contain any type of semiconductor based component then the voltage variation can be achieved by means of changing the tap of coupling transformer through which the SVC is connected to the line. So there are two ways by which we can change the voltage across the SVC and it depends on the construction of SVC. If thyristors are present then by controlling the firing angle and if the thyristors are not present then by changing the tap of coupling transformer. In short, the variation in the voltage is allowed from 0.95 per unit to maximum 1.05 per unit. Linear range of SVC control, this portion starting from this point to this point is known as linear range of control. So this is the control range over which the SVC terminal voltage linearly varies with SVC current or the reactive power. When the magnitude of the current or reactive power varies over its entire capacitive to the inductive range. Slope or the current drop 
the slope or the droop of the vi characteristic is defined as the ratio of voltage magnitude change to the current magnitude change over the linear control range of the compensator in short the slope of this curve change in the voltage divided by change in the current that is known as the slope or we can say the current droop which is denoted by ksl and it is defined as delta v divided by delta i and that represents the impedance offered by svc so where delta v is the change in the voltage magnitude that is from v2 to v1 in this case right so minimum value is v2 and the maximum value is v1 and delta i that is from icr to ilr so this much amount of change in the current causes this much amount of change in the voltage magnitude so that ratio delta v by delta i is known as the slope or the current droop the slope is usually kept within 1 to 10 percentage with a typical value of 3 to 5 percentage in the part number 3 this point is covered then the voltage variation should not be beyond this much uh, magnitude so if there is voltage variation beyond the acceptable limit then that must be restricted within the limit and that acceptable limit is 3 to 5 percent although the svc is expected to regulate the bus voltage that is maintain a flat voltage current profile with a zero slope so ideally the svc should not cause any change in the voltage magnitude if the current is varied and hence we can get the flat voltage profile the slope can be changed by control system in the thyristor control compensator so this slope can be controlled by controlling the firing angle of the thyristors in the case of thyristor control reactor whereas in the case of the saturated reactor compensator this slope is adjusted by series slope correcting capacitor so in the saturated reactor i have explained in the line diagram in series with the saturated reactor we connect the capacitor and the role of that capacitor is to correct the slope which is produced by the residual inductance of saturated reactor so these are the methods by which we can control the magnitude of the voltage and keep it within the limit overload range this portion of the characteristic is defined by the overload range when the svc traverses outside the linear controllable range on the inductive side when the svc goes beyond this line on the inductive side then it is to be said that svc enters into the overload zone where this compensator behaves like the fixed inductor right so in this region the static volt ampere reactive compensator behaves as a fixed inductor and in this range we can no longer change the impedance offered by the svc for the compensation purpose thereafter over current limit to prevent the thyristor valves from being subjected to excessive thermal stress the maximum inductive current in the overload range is limited to a constant value by an additional control action so this portion of vi characteristic is known as the over current limit so in order to prevent the components of svc compensator the maximum inductive current in this overload range is limited to any specific constant value that is this one and that portion is known as the over current limit so these are the various portions of vi characteristic of svc we have uh, started from the v reference thereafter we understood v1 that is v reference maximum and v2 v reference minimum after that linear range of the control and then slope or the current droop after that we understood the overload range and at last over current limit fctcr fixed capacitor thyristor control reactor so this is the line diagram of fctcr and this is the corresponding vi characteristic of fixed capacitor thyristor control reactor and this is the equivalent circuit diagram of this fctcr under certain condition 
so tcr provides continuously controllable reactive power compensation only in the lagging power factor range so in the part number 3 we understood that by controlling the firing angle alpha of thyristor controlled reactor we can control the compensator in only inductive region that is on this side but sometimes we need to control the system with the leading power factor range and for that to extend the dynamic controllable range to leading power factor domain a fixed capacitor bank is connected in shunt with the tcr so in the line diagram you can see that there is one unit of thyristor controlled reactor where anti parallel connected thyristor pair is connected in series with the reactor that is one branch these branches of tcr and apart from that there are fixed capacitors they are connected in parallel fashion in short the entire compensator fc tcr is shunt connected fax controller and that is coupled to the high voltage bus through the coupling transformer so to extend this dynamic controllable range to the leading power factor domain a fixed capacitor bank is connected the fixed capacitor banks usually connected in star configuration and are split into more than one three phase group and this one is the equivalent circuit diagram of this fc tcr this branch represents the net susceptance offered by these all capacitive branches and this branch represents the susceptance offered by the inductive branch each capacitor contains a small tuning inductor that is connected in series and tunes to and tunes the branch to act as a filter for specific harmonic order so in series with the capacitor one inductor element is connected the task of that inductor element is to suppress the specific order of harmonics for instance one capacitor group is tuned to fifth harmonic and another to seventh and another is as high pass filter and so on so this is how we can handle the harmonics into the system the fixed capacitor extends the operating control range of svc to the leading side as well the svc current i svc current flowing through the static volt ampere reactive compensator can be expressed as a function of system voltage that is voltage across this uh, compensator and the susceptance b svc that is the net susceptance offered by fixed capacitor thyristor control reactor so the current through this svc depends on the magnitude of susceptance offered by svc where b svc is as i said earlier it is the combination of susceptance offered by all capacitive branches plus susceptance offered by the reactive branch and bc is nothing but the omega c operating characteristic of this type of compensator shows that volt ampere reactive production as well as volt ampere reactive absorption is possible right so when the magnitude of the firing angle alpha is equal to 90 degree that means this anti parallel connected thyristor pair could be considered as a short circuit element so in the equivalent circuit diagram we get one inductive branch and capacitive branch so the net susceptance offered by the svc is nothing but the bc plus bl and when the magnitude of firing angle alpha is equal to 90 degree at that time maximum susceptance is offered by the inductor element and the task of the inductor is to absorb the reactive power so the maximum inductive susceptance is present into the system then we can get the maximum absorption of the reactive power so for alpha is equal to 90 degree the corresponding limit in the vi characteristic is known as the absorption limit and the net reactance of svc is bc plus bl and when alpha is equal to 180 degree then this anti parallel connected thyristor pair could be considered as an open circuit element so there is no current flow through this branch the svc current only flows through the capacitive branch and the net susceptance offered by the svc is equal to bc 
and the role of capacitive branch is to produce the reactive power and inject into the system and because there is no control element present in the capacitive branches all the capacitive branches are directly connected into the system without any control and if all the capacitors are present into the system maximum amount of the reactive power is produced into the system so the limit corresponding to alpha is equal to 180 degree is known as the production limit so for the fctcr alpha is equal to 90 degree is the absorption limit and alpha is equal to 180 degree is corresponding to the production limit by dimensioning the ratings of tcr and the capacitor respectively the production and absorption ranges can be selected according to the system requirements so this limit on the capacitive region and this limit on the inductive region depends on two things the first ratings of inductive and capacitive elements and second the magnitude of firing angle of this anti parallel connected thyristor pair so the fctcr extends the volt ampere reactive range in the leading power factor compared to only thyristor controlled reactor 